Um, so I'm going to turn you over to Colleen today. And I thought um, when we were planning sessions, I thought, wouldn't it be great to look at look up instead of looking around us so that we could look up uh, and take a look at what was in the night sky. And I know that there's a really famous painting um, done by my favorite artist, Vincent Van Gogh. And um, so we're going to look at that and um, going to sh be sharing with us how to draw a little bit of the night sky and some about Aurora. And when you look at that picture uh, uh, created by Vincent Van Gogh, you know, maybe put yourself in his shoes and what did he, what was he thinking when he looked up the same way we looked up at the night sky today and we're going to be drawing something like that and it's going to be great. Colleen is like our favorite starry night. We have that on your wall. Oh, Charlotte, it's such a beautiful picture and amazing. Oh, that's amazing. And I got to visit that year when I went to um, New York City with my husband and I just fell apart into a puddle of tears, um, which art does. It, it makes you feel, so that's great. And it's so nice that you have that picture for inspiration. It is a beautiful painting and he was a beautiful man. So I'm gonna turn it over to Colleen and we'll see you guys in a little bit. And when you're drawing, I'm gonna play a little bit of a treat, if that's okay with Colleen. Oh, absolutely. I think that's wonderful. I always love what you add, Mally. That's so great. Well, I just thought we needed um, a little bit of inspirational music. Love that. That's so okay when we're doing some drawing. And I also really love um, you sharing about crying and feeling emotional when you were in front of the painting, um, because I feel artwork really can do that. It can really connect to a deep part of us and move us and inspire us. And actually Vincent van Gogh, the style of painting um, that he does um, is called expressionist painting. Um, and uh, it really does try to express more than just what you see. It does try to bring out some emotions and express kind of what he's seeing and feeling inside goes into the artwork. So I really love that you connected with that, Mally. That's so nice. Um, so thanks so much for having me again. It's nice to see everyone. I'm glad that people have these personal connections with the artwork. I see Charlotte says that her mom saw the piece in and that you have a poster of it, that's really amazing. I haven't seen this painting in person um, myself yet. It's on my bucket list. I would really love to see the, the artwork by Van Gogh and I'll show you an image of it in just a second. Um, I have a book here that's Van Gogh right there. That's a self portrait that he made of himself. Um, self portrait is when you make a painting or a drawing or a photograph of yourself. I could almost line it up with my head. Um, and that's so that's what he looks like. Van Gogh, we both had red, or I have red hair and he had red hair. He had a red beard he's kind of famous for. Um, so I'm going to um, share the PowerPoint now. Uh, talk me through this again. Do I just... Sorry, Katie. You're Click right. on the little box at the bottom that has a little arrow coming out of it. Oh, there it is. Yes. Yeah. No worries. It always, every time it always gets me. Sorry. About that. Um, so we'll start with the first slide and start. There we go. So there's Hagar Gallery. I went and visited the gallery yesterday. It's still closed up right now, um, but it was nice to just actually be in the gallery. Um, I, I feel such a strong connection to the building and the artwork that we have there. Um, so uh, I feel like it won't be long until we're back in the galleries and museums and visiting these places again. Thanks, Charlotte. It is kind of a cool building. Um, I think so too. I'm glad that you said that. Uh, does it make you think of anything? Spencer, nice. What does the building look like? I may have asked some of you guys be this before. Does it remind anybody of anything? A triangle. It is like a triangle and actually my earrings are triangles. I love triangles. A sharp right on that is what the architect was thinking when they built this building. They thought it looked like a ship like the front of a ship or ship hall. 
Um, I always think it looks like a big wedge of cheesecake <laughs> when I look at it or any sort of cake. Some people think it looks like a pizza. Um, yeah, I like I like how uh, this, it has a very unusual shape, this building, and we've got a nice rooftop garden that we can go out on in the summer. So hopefully I'll be able to enjoy that in the summer. Um, we have the world's largest collection of Inui art, um, and I'm going to show you some examples of Inui art. Um, thanks, Spencer. So that is the Winnipeg Art Gallery right now. Well, it's looking similar to how it looks right now. The grass is starting to become green and the leaves are starting to come out. Of course, it's time. that they know people have seen it in person. It's made by Vincent van Gogh, who's a Dutch artist. Um, it's painted with oil paint on canvas. And uh, look at all these beautiful stars that are here. So we've got the stars. What do we have here? And let me know, what do, what's this here? Anybody see anything else in the painting that like that they notice that they'd like to point out the moon Charlotte that's right and look how it's glowing. Got these nice rings of light and then there's these swirls. Kerrigan, thank you moon you got it too. these swirls that makes me think it's the air moving and the sky is really kind of alive swirls you notice the town too somebody notices the town as well yes and we see this long um steeple for a church and little houses nestled in there and some trees um some hills in the background it, and then there's this beautiful uh plant up in front so i'm in Oh, he liked to actually go outdoors and make his paintings when he was outdoors right there experiencing the nature. He wasn't working from a photograph like some people work from now. Um, or, and some artists do a quick sketch and then go in and work on their paintings. Um, but he really liked taking his paint outside with him. He'd set up an easel and put his canvas on the easel and um, he would paint right there while he was experiencing the artwork. Now, some of the things that I love the most about this painting are all these little dots of color around the stars and actually all the different dots of color in the sky. When you look at it for, at first, you'd see, oh, it's a blue sky and there's some yellow dots. But then as you look more closely, there's all these different specks of color and lines. And I've got a couple details that I'd like us to look at. Look at this. So this is around the moon, as some people pointed out. The different colors in there. So we see the yellow of the moon. Um, we see some lighter yellow around the moon that's glowing, but then we all see different colors of greens in there. Can you guys see my cursor when I'm moving my cursor around the parts? I'm just curious. I imagine you can. So there. I can see it, Colleen. Yep. Oh, great. Good. Okay, good. Um, there's like a dark here. There's some lighter greens here. And, and blue are mixed together. They make this green color. So Vincent Van have actually created this green color right on the canvas when the yellow thing with the blue. It looks kind of chunky, Charlotte. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because Yesterday when I was preparing for this, I thought I have to mention the texture. I can't forget. And I think I did forget. And you reminded me, Charlotte, it does look chunky. So it looks chunky because he will put his paint on really thick. Gabby, yeah, it does. It's got a texture to it. it means uh, texture is kind of, hi, Emily. 
what you can feel on the painting. Not that we would actually feel this painting, but if you were to feel it, is that impesto? That is a good question, Mally. I, I don't believe that it is. Um, I think now I should I think impesto is when you put a little bit of plaster, is it, with the paint? This is straight oil. Mally, do you know? We are, well, we're going to make our own drawing. Spencer, thanks for the question. Thanks, Mally. If you don't mind looking it up, it's been a while since I've studied that. So, yes, please look it up for me. Um, so, it the, the put on a little thicker here. Now, Van Gogh did like to experiment with, with his paint. Um, and you see here it's cracking a little bit because of how thick it was put on. There's a little bit of crack. So I'm going to move on to the next one. I've just two slides to show of different images and then our own drawing. I know the drawing part's always my favorite when we actually create our own. Um, and applied with a brush or a palette. Oh, your last name is Spencer. Oh, sorry, it's Gap. Was it? Oh, it was just cutting off where my um where my uh, other um, So here's a detail of the star. Here's a detail of the star and we can see there's some white and yellow mixed in. So he was mixing colors sometimes right on the canvas, not necessarily making it all smooth there on his palette before he put it on the canvas. He would be okay with the colors mixing together. There's some, some greens. Look at this beautiful color where the green and the light blue mix together. Details, and you can even see where the canvas was. See that um, kind of textured pattern at the He didn't necessarily totally cover up the canvas. Ah, so now what I wanted to look at also was some images of the northern lights or aurora borealis, which are just so beautiful. Um, I really love the idea of looking up in the night sky and um, just taking in all the wonder of all this magic um, in the night sky. So here I love this photograph that you can see the stars. And you can also see all these different colors of the Aurora Borealis coming together. There's purples and greens and whites. And actually, if we go back to Van Gogh, it makes me think a little of how the light at the bottom looks here. Some different colors at the bottom compared to at the top. Why? like to imagine, I wonder what the Aurora Borealis would have looked like if Van Gogh had really painted an image that looked like this. I bet it would be just amazing. Has anyone seen the Aurora Borealis of our students that are there? I imagine some of you would have at night. Now, here is Ariel. Yes, you've seen them? Yes, somebody else has too. Gabriella, no, not yet. When when I was able to go up to Iqaluit last spring, last April, and I was really hoping to see the Aurora Borealis be all bright and beautiful, but unfortunately it was a little overcast when I was there. So I could faintly see just a little bit of it, but it wasn't as big and bold as I was hoping. So hopefully next time I get to go up north. I haven't, but I've seen a shooting star. Wow, a shooting star would be amazing to see. And somebody else said yes, too. So now this is an image of, this is um, the Aurora Borealis seen from Winnipeg. So this is Winnipeg where I live right now. Um, and sometimes you can see the Aurora Borealis from here, but it is very faint. See how much fainter and subtle, more subtle it is in here? As opposed to year where it's really big and bright. So it's just a little faint and subtle. And I have kind of seen it like that where it's a bit more subtle. Um, now, 
I think because of the light pollution in the city that affects it as well. So light pollution is when it's nighttime and there's all sorts of street lights and building lights and house lights are on. And that's why you can't see the stars in the sky necessarily as clear as you can if you're way out in the country looking up at the sky. Um, I know I've experienced that. I grew up um, in the city living with my mom and my stepdad, but I'd go and visit my dad and my stepmom on the weekends. And my mom would live in the city, but my dad would live in the country. And I was always so fascinated how you could see the stars in the sky so much clearer from the country. So, culture um, of the Aurora Borealis um, made by an Inuit artist, um, Abraham Rubin. And I actually got to meet Abraham. Abraham, he was in Winnipeg a few months ago. Um, he is an Inuit artist who's really fast and so fascinated by Norse culture as well. Um, so here's a sculpture thick enough to stand upright. It is. It's a very thick sculpture. I was really happy to find a sculpture because um, a lot of the artworks that I find are prints um, or paintings of the Aurora Borealis. Um, I thought, wow, this is amazing. It's a three-dimensional interpretation of it. And this is the lights up top. And you really do get that feeling of how magical it is in the sky over top. Can you imagine if you were in a boat um, and you looked up and you saw the sky and the stars? That would just be amazing. That actually kind of reminds me of the movie Moana when I say that. Um, here is a print. And sorry, it's not a very, it, it's looking a little blurry in this sli slide. Um, of The Northern Lights by Germain Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks, Mally. It is, isn't it? Uh, Jermaine Arnak Toyuk. Um, she's an Inuit artist. She lived in, in Winnipeg for quite a while. Um, and she is imagining um, there's an Inuit story um, where they believe that um, that people are playing soccer with a walrus skull and that's what creates the northern lights there's a lot of different legends of different ideas of what the northern lights are um, some cultures believe that it's their ancestors um, other cultures believe it's different animal spirits showing um, themselves in the sky so that's that's really interesting as well i find um, just got a couple more um, here are the northern lights by pitalusa Petalusi Sela, um, she's an amazing Inuit artist, and uh, here's a mom and a baby, and they're walking along, and this, this looks a little different than some other, yeah, thanks, Emily, it is cool, isn't it? Some other interpretations of the Northern Lights, but I really love it. You do get that feeling. I like the, how the lines are going up and down. Um, I love this line going across Cross here. Really cool. And the colors are so beautiful. This is the last slide I have. Um, this is Shuvanaya Shuna. I really love her artwork. Um, she's a contemporary Inuit artist. So that means that she's alive and making a lot of artwork right now. Um, right now, actually, she has a very large show on in the Vancouver Art Gallery right now. Um, and she makes artwork that's kind of surreal. So surrealism is when things have kind of um, fantasy qualities. Oh, you have a session with her work next week. Wow. Oh, you'll have to let me know. I want, I'll, I'll have to um, come in for that one because I'm a huge fan of her work. Um, thanks, Mally. I would love to be there. That'd be awesome. I'm actually very good friends with Shuvanai's sister, Guta Ashuna, and I've shown, I, some of you have seen some of her artwork before that I've shown. Um, Guta lives here, um, just, just a little bit outside of Winnipeg. Uh, so, look at here, she's imagining that there's this 
almost like a dragon-like character going across the sky. And with it is the, this lightning bolt of energy. And that's kind of what the Northern Lights are looking like in the sky. And then there's these beautiful drawing of people holding hands together around the world. Um, and it looks like this line continues over here, this kind of lightning line. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, there is a legend about whistling at the Northern Lights. I think, is it that you're not supposed to whistle at them? I think if you whistle at them, then you get in trouble. Is that how the story goes, I believe? Ah, Rael, that's great sharing. Yes, yes, that's it. So you're not supposed to whistle at them. And I think there's a story where there's some boys or some children that did whistle at them and they were being mischievous. What does create the Northern Lights? Now, does somebody know I should have brushed up on my science? I believe it has to do with like the light shining um, at a certain angle. Can one of our sciencey people chime in on the Northern Lights? Thank you, Mally. <laughs> Mally's on top of it. She's gonna get back to us. Um, one more thing I wanted to point out was that Shuvanaya Shuna, she uses pencil crayons. She uses a lot of pencil crayon and marker when she makes her artwork. Um, and I'm going to be using some pencil crayon solar flares. Thank you, Gabby. I'm going to be using that as well. So I'm going to this. Um, and how do I stop sharing? And I'm back. Perfect. Oh, Perfect. let me read from Mal or Mally. Do you want to say it out loud about the the? Yeah, the sure. Award? And this is something that you guys can ask um, when we have uh, Star Wars Day on Monday. When we see uh, Lori, she's going to talk about the Northern Lights. But it's uh, when particles form um, from the sun during a solar flare, and it penetrates the Earth's magnetic field. And then they collide with the atoms in the atmosphere and they cause little bursts of light, but they usually happen in late fall, winter, and early spring. Thank you, Mally. Thank you. And they happen, and they happen in the north and they're Aurora Borealis and in the south. I forget the name. Katie will know because she lived in, in New Zealand. Um, and they're different in Antarctica, the name. Oh, Aurora Australis. Oh, I didn't know that it had a different name. Aurora Australis. That's cool. Neat. Thank you for that. Thank you. I, I've i read that so many times about how how they, the light particles and the solar flares, but I never seem able to articulate that. That was really well done. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over. I've got a piece of paper. Do, does everyone have, um, it, or you don't have to draw along, but it'd be great if you did draw along. Um, so I've got a piece of paper and then I also have, I have a pencil, but I have some coloring materials as well. I may just jump right into my coloring materials for this session. Um, and it could be any coloring materials you have on hand. If you have some markers, if you have crayons or pencil crayons, um, if I even have some highlighters, if you have that, that you can use. So if you have those on hand, that would be great. Um, if you only have a pencil and want to draw along with the pencil, that would be great too. You can do shading. Um, and I'm going to share screen now with my, um, my papers and we can, we can draw together. Oil pastels would be amazing. Oh, Kerrigan. Yeah. Oil pastels would be great. All right, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Colleen. Awesome. Great. All right. Um, so I'm gonna, if I forget, I'm just, I'm gonna warn you guys, I'm gonna draw upside down today because it's easier for me to um, have my tripod with my camera on it on the other side. and I. Couldn't figure out how to flip the screen. Um, so I am gonna 
start, I thought we would put some Aurora Borealis swirls and that we would also put some beautiful stars. So we'd be inspired kind of by all those images that we saw, if that's all right with everyone. Um, and let's maybe start too many images or too many pieces of paper. Actually, I'm going to start first off by putting a border around it. And you don't have to do this. I didn't I didn't warn you guys about getting tape. But if you ever want to create something that has a border on it, um, and you can use this not just for when we're painting, but it can be for when you are working with markers or um, crayons. You can just take some tape. I'm just using some green painter's tape right now, but you could use masking tape or sometimes I've even just used scotch tape. Um, and I tape it down to the table. So half is on the paper and half is on the table. Sometimes I'll peel off the um, tape carefully so that I can reuse it again too. So I'm not wasting too much. I thought this may be a good one to put a border on. So I'm going to put a little border. There we go. Okay. Now I thought I'd start maybe just with a yellow crayon and um, put some stars. And I'm going to be kind of inspired by Van Gogh stars and just make them kind of rough circles right now. Just kind of rough circles. Filling up the sky. One year um, with a group of students, I recreated Van Gogh Starry Night. Um, all together to make it a huge backdrop um, for the school stage. Um, so every person got just a tiny square of Van Gogh Starry Night painting and then they made that square, they made it really big and um, we made it like a big puzzle. So at the end we put it all together and it was this huge, huge um, backdrop to the stage. Um, that was a fun project. Okay, so I put a little bit of crayon, of uh, the yellow crayon down. Now I'm going to go in actually with some orange and I'm just going to make kind of messy kind of little swirls over top. These are going to be my stars. So I'm kind of just being inspired by Van Gogh's work right now. Um, now I would like, now I want to be inspired by the Aurora Borealis though. So I'm going to take some green crayon. Oh, it looks like I made somebody noticed about my, uh, my, uh, the paint on my table. Yes, it's actually mostly, um, acrylic paint. Actually, it looks like oil paint. Oil paint and acrylic paint can look quite similar. Um, uh, yes, I've made quite a bit of a mess on this table, haven't I? <laughs> Some good art's been made here. Good art time. Okay, so I am going to now take this green crayon. I peeled it and I, um, I put it on its side, but you guys don't need to do that. You could just hold it straight up if you'd, if you'd like. And I'm going to make just kind of like a swirl. I'm going to go down. And I'm going to go up. Imagine this is kind of my Aurora Borealis going across the page. Um, reminds me a little bit of Shuvanaya Shuna is kind of how she made it like a lightning bolt going across. Uh, now I'm going to take a lighter green and just make kind of a scribbling back and forth. There we go. Now, I also liked how in that photograph we looked at, there's also kind of some purple lines. Oh, Gabby, you can't see? Um, can, can you not see my screen at all? Maybe Katie can help you with, the, with that. Hmm. So Gabby, try leaving and coming back. Oh, she can't hear either, I'll type. 
either. Oh. Okay. So now I've got a purple here, and I think I'm just going to go through and kind of make some lines, like some purple going through. Um, okay, so now I'm thinking about how we could see those little bits of green around um, the, the outside of Van Gogh's stars. So I think I'm going to take the yellow, I'm going to start with the yellow and just make some lines going around kind of dashes, almost like dashes going around that's like the light kind of exploding from the star, shining out from these stars. I'm going to do the same here. And I'm going to do the same here. And I know everybody's drawing is going to end up looking a little bit different and that's going to be really great. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. I'm glad you're thinking this is cool. Good. I, are you doing a drawing, Charlotte, as well? Are you able to draw at the same time? Because I bet yours is looking really cool, too, if you are. And even if you're not drawing, if everyone's not drawing right now, that's okay. Maybe you'll be inspired to make a drawing or try it out a little later on. Yes, you're you. Oh, that's right. You're using the oil pastels. I forgot you, the oil pastels really blend together nicely. So you'll be able to get almost the same sort of effect with oil pastels that Van Gogh did with his oil paints. There we go. Now I'm going to use the light green and make not as many, but make some dots or da almost like dashes. like the sound it's making. It's everybody, I imagine everybody in their homes making this kind of sound as well as they're drawing along. Oh, which reminds me, Mally was going to play some music at some point too. Yeah, so there was, um, as Colleen said, there was a, there was a very famous artist. His name was um, Vincent van Gogh and he lived in the Netherlands and he, painted, uh, he just wanted to paint and paint and paint. That was his passion. And he um, never was really recognized for the amazing artist that he was during his lifetime. And his story is really kind of, it's an interesting story, a beautiful story and kind of a little tragic, but he had, a be he had an amazing, um, gift that he left the world these beautiful paintings so oh about maybe 30 years ago there was a very um an awesome musician his name was don mclean and he wanted to write a little music about this painting and about the life of vincent so we're going to put that in the background and colleen's going to keep talking and I just wanted you to hear how somebody took the inspiration from the painting that you guys are making and turned it into a song. And I think it's a beautiful song. And I really do hope that you guys can go and learn a little bit more about uh, Vincent van Gogh and about Chouvenay. Um, We're gonna learn about Chouvenay's work next week, but learn a little bit about some of the artists that we're talking about, because sometimes their art makes a little bit more sense when you learn a little bit about their life, right, Colleen? Absolutely. That's I love when I was um, when I was a well a child and actually still now. Um, that was one of my favorite things to, was if I saw an artwork that I liked was then to start learning more about the artist, the person who made the artwork and why they made the art that they did. Um, and the book actually that I showed you, I've had this book. Oh, I'll show you here since I was a child. 
Um, and I really found it fascinating to look at the pictures of his artwork and learn more about his style. There's another one that's quite similar. Um, Vincent had a really interesting relationship with his brother. Um, and I, I found that really fascinating to read about. I have a brother myself. I'm sure many of you do. And, and, and if you ever, ever have the chance to travel either to New York or Amsterdam or to um, even Toronto, I think there are a couple of Van Gogh paintings at the Toronto Museum. Do you have a gallery? Do you have any uh, in the WAG? We do not have um, a Van Gogh um, that we own in our collection. We don't. We've shown um, Van Gogh's artwork, um, and I think we had a Van Gogh just a couple years ago because we bring in different touring exhibitions from time to time. Um, so that was really great to have it in in the art gallery and have it on display. But we don't own a Van Gogh ourselves. To my knowledge. No, I would Okay, so I'm just going to turn this on and you guys can uh, draw and I might draw a little. Great. Let me know if you can hear it. If not, I'll put it on a different speaker. So I'm just putting some, I'm putting some green, just some green grass on the bottom. You can put whatever you would like if you'd like to draw some flowers on the bottom or put some houses like Van Gogh made or some trees across the bottom. Feel free to do that. I'm just making it kind of green right now and then filling in the sky um and I, so catch the breeze and the bitter chills in colors on the snowy stop so we could listen to this song for a bit um now i'm taking a blue marker and i'm just putting the marker right over top of the crayon um the crayon will should still stay on top. This marker is running out on me, though. I'll have to switch over to a different marker. Yeah, this marker is giving up on me. I'm gonna try a different marker. So Emily, you can't hear the song. Swirling clouds in violet haze. Yeah, okay, let me try something different. I can hear it now, Mally. Green fields of amber gray. The artist's loving hand. I understand what you try to say to me. Your sanity, how you tried to set them free. They would not listen, they did not know how. For they could not love you. But still your love was true. And when no life as lovers often do. But I could have told you this. This world was never meant for one as beautiful. I don't want to talk too much over the beautiful song. I'm just letting you know I'm taking, I, so I put what um, marker over of the crayon, and now I'm just going to take a bit of water here. And it's almost like I'm creating like a watercolor paint. The wax crayon is going to stay on the top. And the the blue marker is mixing with the water and blending in a bit. That is a cool technique, Colleen. Thanks, Mally. 
Um, this was something that I would also do when I was a kid and didn't have paints at home um, and wanted to make something that looked a little bit different with my markers and my crayons. So if you do have markers um, and you have, have some crayons, you can make this effect. Um, and it's, it doesn't really make a mess, which is kind of a bonus as well. Okay, now I think I need something more on the ground here. Um, let's see. What color can I use? Oh, maybe brown. I'm just going to go over over my green crayon with some brown crayon. And then if you wanted to add more marker over top, um, you could do that as well. Which color should I use now? Oh, I think I'm gonna, I've got a purple. Maybe this purple will, let's see what this purple does. There we go. That's kind of a neat line. It's getting a little, the line's getting, it's hard to tell on the screen, but it's getting a little fuzzy because it's bleeding in with the, with the water. Bleeding um, together is when the, marker or the paint just runs into the water a little bit. You get little, uh, little fuzzy lines coming out. Um, now I wanted to show you something else that you guys could do while you're at home. Um, sometimes I like to add little pieces of shiny materials uh, to my artwork. I'm just trying to see if they're, oh, I do have a, I have something I can show you. I'm just going to grab off my shelf. So this was a book that I made for a show I had a few years ago. Um, and I just used, actually, I think it was actually from this um, chocolate box container that I have that I saved. I liked how it was kind of the shiny, um, shiny side. And I used a hole punch and punched out uh, these colors. Actually, it was that book because I can see, or this container, because I can see the copper colors here. I used a hole punch and punched it out and glue it on top of uh, this book that I made out of recycled cardboard. I even kind of kept the, the paper tape here and uh, made some collage images that I cut out from a magazine. I put a map here. This is a map of the neighborhood I grew up in. So that's what this book that I made is all about the neighborhood I grew up in. So that's another idea for you guys. Um, but I thought instead of using the hole punch, I would just use my scissors to cut some out. Oh, here's, this would have been um, something that a chocolate bar was wrapped in that I've held on to because I thought it was a really nice piece of gold paper um, and that had the chocolates in it. And this, my friend gave me a whole bunch of these uh, foil sleeves. They would be like you would put a hamburger in it if you were out at the park and had a hamburger, um, but they haven't been used. So sometimes I use them to, um, to cut out of, to add uh, shiny things. So I think I'm gonna put, should I put, well, I think I'm going to use the gold paper and I'm just going to take my scissors um, and I am going to I'm just going to cut little shapes. I don't think it necessarily has to be stars. Oh, maybe I should make them like triangles because I like triangles so much. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put some triangles in the sky. So you guys can always add pieces of collage if you have some magazines or some flyers around your house that aren't being used that your parents say it's okay for you to cut up 
and to glue onto um, your artwork. I'm going to cut a few. And I'm going to take my glue. You can use white glue or glue stick, whatever you have on hand. Sometimes if I didn't have um, glue at home, my mom would mix a little bit of flour and water together and that would create a paste. And Gabriella or Charlotte, I'm sure that if you can, uh, if you ask your mom for a bit of tin foil, I'm sure she'd be glad to give you some. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I was thinking. This is similar to tin foil. You could probably, if you ask permission, you could probably get a little bit. Um, I was thinking some cracker contain containers or cracker bags of crackers um, have kind of a shininess to it as well. Um, yeah, keep your eyes open for what you can recycle around your house. Give it a new life with the art. And I'll glue my triangles on. I wonder what Vincent Van Gogh would think about my, my shiny triangles. Makes it a little surreal. Chauvinize work. Um, oh, somebody's Gabriella, you're doing this digitally. Very cool. Very cool. And I always like to see artwork at the end. If anybody wants to send their work to Mally or to Katie for them to pass on to me, I love seeing the artwork that you guys create. That would be awesome. My fingers are getting sticky. I'm just kind of spreading them out however, wherever I think it looks like there should be a triangle. That's part of making your own artwork, your own composition. Think about how, how it would look the most balanced for what you would like to do. So balanced means that sometimes if there's um, if I put a piece over here, maybe I'd want to put another piece over here to balance it out, make it equal. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a balanced piece. You can put a whole bunch on one side and not as many on the other. That's okay too. Um, I kind of like the way that And I glue it down just where I'm putting the glue is mostly in the middle and then the water is making my foil um, curl up a little bit so it looks like they're almost jumping off the page a bit. There we go. Now I think I'm going to take my border off now to have another to have a look at it without the border on and then I can see um, see what else I may like to add. So I'm just very carefully peeling off the um, the tape off the paper and you'll see sometimes it rips a bit of the paper off some of the papers coming off with it and that's okay. That really doesn't bother me. Putting a border on it sometimes just creates a nice crisp line. a little bit closer you guys can see and I wonder what else I should add to this um, maybe I'm going to oh I've got no maybe not that one. here we go I've got a kind of a goldish Crayola marker Maybe I'll see how these, oh, I think I'm just going to add some dots with this. So maybe if you had a yellow marker, you may want to do that or some, any sort of color, really. I'm going to add some dots in the sky. 
Is it a little bit blurry? It looks like it's gone a little bit blurry. And I think I'm going to go over this grass um, with this green marker. Some more green flecks. Oh, sorry, guys. It's gotten blurry. Oh, there we go. Now I think I'm going to hold it up um, on my regular camera so you can see it a little bit better. Just going to zoom out of this. All right, so there we go. I made a mixed media artwork so we've mixed medias we used all sorts of mediums on this one we used crayon and marker and collage using those foils thanks katie katie did you make a one along with us too this time i always like seeing your artwork it's so amazing i didn't because i didn't i only had a pencil so i started drawing the stars but ev and i are going to try it later Oh, awesome. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I, Not at all. I'm expecting, I on the spot. <laughs> I'm expecting text messages from people showing me their artwork, hopefully. I would love to see what everyone's artwork is looking like. How's everyone feeling about their artwork? Sounds like they're busy. Everybody's busy. So neat. Oh, thanks, Charlotte. I'm, I'm glad it's Neat for you. Have you filled up your page, Charlotte, with your oil pastels? Oh, just an okay, you guess? Oh, it's all filled, filled up. And you use the tin foil. Wonderful. I'd love to see how that looks. And the person who said just okay is, is there's something I can help with it. Oh, I'd love to get, if you got your mom to send a picture, that'd be awesome, Charlotte. Thank you. I'd love to see it. We really appreciate that. Yeah. It makes our days. It really does. I love seeing the artwork. Anybody else want to? Oh, you still have a picture of your grasshopper to send. I would love to see your grasshopper. Now you sent it to your teacher and she loved, oh, I'm glad to hear that. Nice. You could do um, a starry night scene with grasshoppers in it, or you mm. could have grasshoppers in space. That would be really cool. Actually, I bet Shuvan Ayashuna would love that. Grasshoppers floating around the earth. <laughs> I'm so excited that you talked about Shuvenai because we, oh, um, this is a very rare a huge fan. She's probably um, one of my favorite artists right now, Mally. She definitely is one of my favorite, but probably top three right now. I'm such a huge wow. fan of her work. Well, we're, her work. we're so thrilled to be able to have that opportunity. Wow. And she's from an amazing family of artists. There's three generations of artists in her family. And they're from Cape Dorset, Nunavut. So those of you who live on Baffin Island, you might know of uh, Shuvenai and her work at because she lives in Cape Dorset. Yeah. So I'll for sure text you the date and time. We're Keep still. Mind, I'll have to make yeah. I'll have to make sure I'm available for that. I'd love to hear what they have to say about her work. Um, they've created a great um, handout for teachers, which is a great resource um, about yeah. the show. Yeah, I I, I know. <laughs> Susan's You're been, familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, Susan's been amazing. Like your art, the art educators have been phenomenal in sharing with us for Connected North at Home. But you and Jamie are the kids' favorites because oh. they show up time and time again. 
And I know that uh, the students only have a little bit of a break before their session with Lee. So um, I hope you all enjoyed Starry Night and the stories of the stars today that we've had so many stories of stars and those beautiful techniques. And Colleen, I, I didn't even know about the watercolor using the paint. That was very spontaneous. I saw the water there and I thought, oh, let's use use that. It was a great idea. I'm going to use that idea because so many times I, I only have certain materials in my house and I do have old markers that my son's teacher every year offers the kids who wants to take the old classroom markers home and my son loves to collect old markers apparently so that's a perfect use. <laughs> you can even dip them right in the water. You know what? I yeah. should do that. You could dip it right in the water. For this blue one that's running out and I bet it'll be like you're painting with it. It is. It kind of is like you're painting with it. It's brought it back to life. Tips and tricks. So you can try that out and then Crayola recycles them. If you get on with their recycling program, they will recycle any brand of markers, even Sharpies. You just send them to them. Did not know that. Mm -hmm. Wow, we'll have to put that link on your, um, let me write that down. Yeah, I can, would you like me to send you the link for the recycling program? Yep, because I I, I have a list of, of things that I need to put on the website. Well, thanks so much for your time, you guys. You're always awesome. I love this time with you. And we love the time with you too, Colleen. And I guess we'll see Jamie for animation on Friday. We're Friday. so excited. On, yes. And I have an email to send you away. I'll do that right now. Okay. Thank you so much, Thanks. Colleen. Thanks, Thanks students. We'll see you in about a half an hour for Lee. And she has really cool stuff to show us as well. Thanks, Colleen. That was wonderful. Thanks, Bye, guys. Thanks so Bye. much. Bye. Bye, Gabriella. Bye, everybody.